Hello and welcome to another bike packing Q&A video. In this video, I'm going to answer a question I get quite a lot. What's in my bike packing bags and how do I pack them? This is my Cannondale Topstone and I've been using this for many years as my main bike packing bike. I don't really use this in the winter and this isn't a winter setup. I have a completely separate video for that. So if you would like to check out what I do when I go to Arctic Norway or the Highlands of Scotland in winter, I'll leave a link up there or in the description so you can watch it now. I'm not gonna to spend too much time talking about the bike itself. This video is about the bags, but I have done a separate video about the bike. I'll leave that in the description as well. So let's get started. Let's start at the front of the bike. This is my front roll-up bag. This is a Topic front loader. And in there, I can fit all of my sleeping equipment. This is just sleeping stuff. So in there, I have my tent, Nemo Dragonfly, my sleeping mat, my sleeping bag, and my pillow. I found that when I made the switch to the Nemo Dragonfly, which is a very small packable tent, I can fit everything in this front bag. So that's what I like to do. I like to have a bit of a theme, as you'll probably see as we're going around the bike. Every bag has something specific in it, so I know where to find stuff. Moving on to the top tube bag. This is a Topic top loader. And in there, I tend to put essentials that I can get really quickly when I'm riding, because it's very accessible. So by that, I mean a mini battery pack if I need to quickly charge my phone or the Garmin or anything like that. And I also have a luggage lock in there if I need to quickly lock my bike up if I'm going into a shop. I always put a couple of small snacks in there as well that I can grab easily. And other random spares and repairs stuff like a multi-tool and tire levers. These fork bags are a fairly new addition to this bike. I've had them for ages, they're Outkit Batonga bags. And I've been using them primarily on my mountain bike, which has tail fin suspension mounts so I can strap cages to it. The reason I haven't been using these bags on this bike is because normally there isn't anywhere for me to screw them onto. But recently I've been using these Old Man Mountain axle packs, which screw into the through axle and give you a couple of mounting options. If you want to put some bottle cages on the front, you can, or in this case, cargo cages. In the past, all the stuff that's in here that I'm going to show you was crammed into other areas of the bike, which wasn't ideal. It meant that the bags were very overloaded, but now it means I've got plenty of space. Everything's in there pretty comfortably and I've moved some of the weight forward as well. So the balance is a little bit better. So what are in the bags? In this one is all my cooking equipment. This is pretty basic. I don't do a huge amount of cooking, but I have a gas canister in there, MSR pocket rocket stove, and a Stanley cooking pot with two cups in there. And in there, I can usually put a few things like a mini spork and some milk and tea bags and things like that. So most of my cooking stuff fits into this tiny bag. The other Batonga bag on the other side, that hasn't really got a regular use. It depends on where I'm going. Normally, I'll put a sleeping bag liner in there just to help keep my sleeping bag clean and give me a bit of extra warmth. But if I'm going somewhere where I want to do a bit of swimming, for example, that might be where I put my swimming trunks and my towel. Moving on to the frame bag. This is a Topic mid loader. And in here, it's pretty simple. I just use this for food. I put loads of snacks in there. I can put all my dehydrated meals in there as well if I need to. The only thing I put in here which isn't food themed is that I tend to put a couple of inner tubes in here as well because they're quite bulky and I can stick them right at the back. I don't need to access them until I have a puncture, of course. Everything else is fairly easy to get hold of. There's two zips, one on each side. So if I need to grab another snack and put it in the top bag once I've eaten these, I can do it. And finally, moving on to the panniers. And these are my Topic MTX trunk bag panniers. I've done another video on these because I've actually had these, not this specific bag, but another one for over 10 years. So I've been using them for a very long time and they are really good. In theory, I don't really need this pannier with the rest of the setup. If I just had a really small rear pack to put my clothes in, I'd have pretty much everything I needed for a bike packing trip. But the reason I use these, I've mentioned before, is because I take my bike all over the world and film bike packing adventures. So mostly the stuff that's in here is filming equipment. That's why it needs to be quite big and that's why it needs to be very strong, hence why it's on a pannier rack. The pannier is split into three parts. So there's a top bag here, like a box where you can store stuff. And then there's two side panniers. In this pannier that you can see here, the one on the left-hand side, I put all of my clothes. So everything I need from like base layers, joggers, other t-shirts, underwear, fleeces and hats, everything can fit in there comfortably. I also have some decathlon pumps in there, which I tend to use because they can pack down dead flat. And it's nice to have another pair of shoes other than your cycling shoes. So what's in the other sections of this bag? At the top is where I store all of my main cameras. So I have my Sony a7 III in there. I have ND filters and microphones and spare batteries. 
everything I need for that main camera goes in there. This is also where I put my main battery pack, which is what I use to charge my phone, my watch, and all my other equipment. I've got plenty of juice in there. It's a 20,000 milliamp anchor power bank. That tends to go at the bottom. I don't need that during the day. It's only when I've set up camp that I use that. And at the other side is where I store my drone. I use a DJI Mavic 3 with a fly more combo. So I have lots of spare batteries, ND filters for that as well, and the controller. It pretty much fills the entire pocket on that side as a result of it being in quite a substantial box. I do, however, put my waterproof in here as well. I can just about fit that. I put that right at the bottom underneath the drone because I only need that when it starts raining. The drone I use quite frequently, so I have that at the top. Last couple of things to mention about this bag. At the back, you've got a kind of drinks holder pocket, but I use this to put my sun cream in and my midge net, things that I need quite easy access to. I know where it is, but I also use this as a bin as I'm riding. So any rubbish that I've got from eating my bars or snacks, I put in there when I stopped. And as a result, I know where all the rubbish is. I don't have to root around my bags to empty everything at the end. I just grab it all, chuck it straight in the nearest bin. And finally, the tripod that sits on top of the MTX trunk bag. It's got these cool elasticated things, which means that I can tighten it on. It's really stable and it's never once fallen off. And given I've done thousands and thousands of miles with this sat on top, I'm pretty impressed with it. I am, however, starting to look for a new film setup. The reason being is that the camera in this box is a little bit susceptible to being rattled about a bit. I do protect it in a case and I do put sort of padding in there if I can. But if you're doing really rough, rocky terrain, it can take its toll on the camera and cameras are very expensive. So I am looking at other options to remove some of the camera equipment from here and fit it to myself for that extra protection. So that's my bike packing setup and how I pack my bike packing bags. Let me know what you think about my setup in the comments section, but also let me know what you do. The great thing about bike packing is everyone has such a different system and way of doing things. So I'd love to hear what you do because this isn't set in stone. I am going to change it as time goes on. I always want to refine it and make improvements. So the more I learn from you, the better it will be. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.